I hope this is working and I hope you can hear. I thought I'd do a live stream today. I am, well, I'm heading out. Man, that's always fun. Middle of summer, snake in the road. Uh, a lot of people have, have uh, watched some of my videos lately and I mentioned in one of my videos I'm going to be doing a three-day class and that I can't wait to go to this class and it's something that I want to do and have been wanting to do for a long time. And on purpose, I didn't tell you what the class is. Amen. And so today is my birthday. So this is something I'm going to be doing for me. Amen. Uh, I've been doing a lot for you guys. And I'm just so thankful to have the opportunity to preach and teach and, and uh, well, share with you all. And by the way, if you can hear me, make sure you say we can hear you. I hope the audio is working here. Somebody tell me if it is. But I'm on my way to my class. Now, should I tell you what my three-day class is every day from 8 till 5? Hmm, should I? Thank you. We can hear you. Good. Should I tell you what? Okay, so let me tell you who I am and where I come from real quick. Just give you a little bit of background. Uh, I, was I was born in Florida from a long line of people that lived by the water. We are the breakers. You know, it's said we have salt water in our veins. <laughs> Uh, ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, my mom says that I was always out swimming in the bay. Um, we have lots of pictures. I'm two, three, four years old, all by myself, swimming all the time. So when you grow up on the water, you're what they call a water boy. <laughs> Memories as a child or dad taking me out uh, on the sailboat. And we'd go out, and I just remember being a little boy, and wonderful it was to go out on the sailboat with dad. And uh, my sailboat that I have now was given to me by my mom, and it's just a little 14-foot sailboat. And remember that video I did a while back where I took all the kids sailing on this little 14-foot sailboat? Well, as a child, Dad had a 14-foot vagabond sailboat. And, uh, boy, traffic's bad today. I'm just sitting here. And I remember as a child going out on that many, 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 many times. And some of my fondest memories are taking out the sailboat with Dad. And dad say, all right, get out the sail. And, you know, I was the one that pulled it out of that little sail bag. What is it, Lycron or something? And just the smells and the feel of the sail and just the good times that I had with dad. Some of the best times of my life sailing. And um, mom and dad, when they uh, got married, they had a 26-foot sailboat. Well, so I've sailed and I know how to sail, but I've only sailed little boats. I've never sailed a bigger boat. So... I know the anticipation is killing you. What is your class? What class is this? Well, I'm going to a three-day sailing class on how to go sailing. And uh, I know how to sail, but I've only sailed little uh, boats, 14 foot. I'm learning how to sail the bigger ones that are 26 foot. And you get a bigger boat, you've got all sorts of stuff. You've got the spinnaker and the jib and the genoa and all these things. The asymmetrical, oh, I can't even say the word, asymmetrical, uh, what do you call it, um, spinnaker and things like that. So uh, I can learn, I'm sure, by myself, but nothing beats hands-on. So read the book, been reading the book, and now it's time to go and get some hands-on instruction in Pensacola on sailing. And now this isn't just for funsies. Most of you know we're in the last days. We're in the end of the world, it looks like. And you know, any day these people could outlaw fossil fuels and and things like that say well you can't have a car and, and you can't do anything unless it's battery powered or things like this so living close to the water um, one of the ways we could travel then if they change everything and get rid of fossil fuels and oil and things like that is we could travel by boat so I am always trying I don't I don't know if I'd call myself a prepper or anything like that but I'm always trying to find things and figure out how's the best way to prepare for the future if there is a future I believe the Lord's coming so soon at the rapture but they asked Martin Luther one time, they said, what would you do if you knew the rapture was today? He said, well, I got some potatoes in the garden that I need to get. What was he saying? He was saying, I do everything that I normally do. I just couldn't wait for the Lord to come back. But he says, the Bible says, occupy till I come. Amen. So we should be occupying in what it is we're doing. And uh, do try to witness to people. This will be an opportunity to witness somebody new that I've never met before. So I'm going to have a three-day hands-on class with another fella. And uh, there'll be two of us, and I'll be learning how to sail a bigger sailboat. And hopefully in the future, maybe I could sail somewhere and uh, do some uh, sermons 
which is something I'm looking forward to. Uh, there are many places that I know in my head that I can't get you to in a car. <laughs> and if we could get there by sailboat, then I could set up the camera and do my um, preaching and, and uh, teaching videos in some beautiful locations that are only accessible by water. So the breakers, we've come up a long line of, of sailors. Um, if you go back to the 1700s, when we came over from Switzerland. Uh, they came on a sailboat, they ended up in, I believe it was Barbados. And then my fifth great grandfather, well, he went to South Carolina. And his son, Louis Frederick Breaker, my fourth great grandfather, what did he do? He became a wrecker. You know what a wrecker is? He moved down to Key West, Florida. And in Key West, Florida, there's so many shipwrecks because there's a lot of shallow water down there that it became a business of going out in a boat and salvaging all of the wrecks. They called them wreckers. And so, if you're shipwrecked there, a third went to those who found it first, a third went to the city of Key West, and a third went back to the owner. So you didn't want to wreck your ship back in the 1800s off the coast of Key West because you literally lose two thirds of everything, but at least you got a third back. So that was my fourth great grandfather, all about the water, he was a wrecker. His son, I did command the candy breaker, my third great grandfather, he loved the water. And his dad said, man, if I don't, uh, if I don't get him away from the water, he's going to be a sailor and he'll be gone. And so we've always been sailors. Um, his his brother was James Henry Breaker. You remember the video I did about him and how he went down uh, to uh, Brooksville area in the uh, Civil War and how his son died during the Civil War and revival broke out because of that. And guess what? Before he was a pastor, he was a ship captain. He had two ships. One was called the Lion. One was the Ella. And uh, so that was kind of neat to study all my family history. And so Jacob Manley Canty Breaker eventually went to Texas and uh, was around Houston. And you know Houston, you know it's not far from the water. And uh, his son and his son and his son, they all settled close to the water on Galveston Bay. And my grandpa, he had a boat. And uh, it was called the Mobarpy, the Mobile Pilot uh, Association. And it was a 65 foot boat. And he, he sold it, but he never got the money for it. So. Uh, if that boat's still out there, uh, whoever owns it, that's stolen property. You need to see the breakers and get that back to us. But anyway, that was so many years ago, you know. But uh, my dad grew up sailing. And my dad on uh, Galveston Bay, after hurricane, the story goes, he found a sailboat. And uh, went around all the neighbors, this year's, this year's, no. After a certain period of time, you can claim it. And he took that sailboat and learned to sail a little, I think it was about a, uh, it was under 20 feet. So we have it in our blood, sailing and things like that. And I just want to go sailing and I just want to learn how to do it more efficiently. I'm thinking of buying a sexton so I can learn how to actually navigate from the stars. And eventually I'd like to get out there and spend days and days and days at a time on the water. One of the most soothing things is just being out there, you and the wind and a boat and just no problems. There's, it's like the world doesn't even exist. It's just you and the Lord sailing around. So keep me in prayer as I do this three-day thing. I'm going to be very tired probably, but um, I've learned over the years a lot of things. I know how to sail a little boat, but I want to, I want to upgrade and learn how to do uh, more. So if you would keep me in prayer, and I said all that to say this, there may or may not be a sermon this week because I've got this going on and I'm going to be so busy. So if you would, keep me in prayer. And if there's a sermon this week and I'm able to get to that, great. If I'm so baked by the sun and sunburned and tired from three long days of sailing, then there may not be. So just pray for me. And if there's not, well, there's plenty of others. Um, I recently changed the website a little bit where it says podcast. The link that says podcast, I uh, changed that to podcast and Sunday school. And so I'll start putting some of the Sunday school teachings on that link so you can see the Sunday school teaching. Many of you said you saw the video entitled, It's All Coming Together. Well, hopefully you saw that. Um, some of the links didn't work. I fixed that this morning. So you can find all the other channels and everything and find that video and then the one before about the uh, covenant with our fathers. Uh, folks, we are in some crazy times and it's time to prepare. It's time to prepare. Um, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. And the gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. How that Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And it's all about that blood that he shed for our sins. 
And so you need to come to Jesus and trust him as your Savior. Trust that blood for the forgiveness of your sins. So I appreciate you all. I hope this has been a, a fun little live stream. And I am excited. It's my birthday, and I get to go do something fun. And I get to learn. It's all about learning. There's so much that we need to know. And in our verse-by-verse -verse Bible study through 1 John, it's all about knowing something. It's all about knowledge. Remember how many times it says no? Another thing that I did, a lot of people are thinking that the rapture might be this July. I'm kind of leaning more towards September, but you never know. 7, 2, 3 or something is a, is a uh, uh, date they're throwing out there. I'm not setting the date today. But um, I went ahead and did all of the 1 John teachings and I went ahead and posted all of them. I'm like six weeks ahead, praise God. And I posted them all on YouTube, but I set them up to where they will, every Monday, you'll get to see a new one. So it's set up to where they're uh, set up to uh, publish to where you can see it every Monday. So that way, if the rapture does come, at least that study will be finished, amen? And every Monday, a new one will come out. And I don't know how that works. I can't see it on your end. So go to those videos and click. And I think there's a countdown or something. So every Monday for the next six weeks, it's already automatically set up on YouTube in order for it to come out every Monday, another teaching from First John, okay? So I wanted you to do, I had to do that because my old computer burned up and it had all of those videos on it and thank god i was able in safe mode to get those and uh, save them and i i just didn't have room on that computer i just i had too much on it and it burned up so i've had to get a new computer and working on that and uh oh i, I don't like change <laughs> i like things that are the same but now you got to learn all this new stuff and new computers and everything else so there we go keep me in prayer here goes nothing amen and uh going to go to the sailing class and i'm really 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 looking forward to learning more about sailing and it just so happens today there's no wind so up oh, up oh, i see a little bit amen pray for a wind okay well that's all i got to say i appreciate y'all please pray for me and um i want y'all to know i love you and i'm praying for you and i'm doing my best to tell you the truth warn you about the days we live in and warn you about certain things and uh the only thing worth anything in this world is laying up treasures in heaven okay so if you haven't done that yet get the gospel tracks get the inserts get the book and witness to other people people are starting to wake up and listen because everything that's happening in the bible it's all coming together wait for it it's all coming together just like the bible said and people are starting to get scared and people are starting to see that and they're starting to go, wow, you mean the Bible? You got it. Now, you need to go to see what the Bible says about eternity. And uh, it's important. So, all right, I got to do this in Spanish, too, so I better let you go. God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. And if I can figure out how to turn this thing off, amen. Well, we're still here. Hi. <laughs> all right, pray for me and pray for wind. Thank you. Bye-bye.